Number 28, the upper leg muscle quadriceps exert a force of 1250 newtons, which is carried by a tendon over the kneecap, the patella, at the angle shown in figure 9.37. Find the direction and magnitude of the force exerted by the kneecap on the upper leg bone, aka the femur. All right, um, so here's a picture. This problem is a little confusing, but it's really not that bad when you think about what the essence of it is. Um, here they tell us that the you know uh, force that the quadricep muscle is, is exhibiting is going to be uh, 1,250 newtons, and there's this tendon that connects you know the quadricep to your tibia right here. Okay, um, so uh, now that being the case, by the way, this is the tibial tuberosity for those of you who are interested, and um, oh man, I remember memorizing all those origins and insertions and muscle actions, and my goodness, that was fun. Okay, moving on. Um, <clears throat> so basically, you know, this force here equals this force over here, but the angles are different, right? So this problem is essentially just a, uh, you know, some of the forces problem, okay? The main idea to remember here is that since it is in equilibrium, the sum of the forces will equal zero. Andrew, how did you know it was in equilibrium? It doesn't say. <clears throat> well, I have to assume that it is. Otherwise, if it's not, what's the acceleration? Right? I can make up any number. So being that they don't tell us an acceleration, we have to assume the simplest set of assumptions. And that would be that the sum of the forces is equal to zero and there is no acceleration. So anytime you have a... We, I got a question the other day about this. Anytime you have... Um, Forces in a problem, several forces, and they're pointing in different directions, it is best to use a component table. I've developed that idea prior in uh, chapter, I don't remember now, three, maybe somewhere, four, five, all throughout the text. Um, the main idea is whenever you have a bunch of forces pointing in different directions, or a bunch of vectors, I should say, pointing in different directions, it's best to use a component table because a component table organizes your thoughts. That's all it does. Okay, it organizes everything. So let's create our component table. So here we have our X components of our vectors, and then here we'll have the Y components, okay, of the vectors. All right, and this will, this column over here will represent the vectors themselves, or in this problem, it's going to be the forces, okay? So here I have one force of the quadricep, I'll call that F uh, Q1, okay? Uh, what's the X component of this particular force. Well, draw a triangle in the picture, right? Here's your, here's your right triangle. Whoop. Here's your, well, what's going on? Okay, that's not bad. Here's your right triangle, right? So this is the hypotenuse. You're trying to find the x value. How do you find that? Uh, we use cosine, right? So this fq1 over here is going to be equal to cosine of, I'm not going to write out all the equations. I've done that prior. I'm just going to try to save some time now, okay? If you guys need help with, you know, the trig stuff, go back to the beginning of the text, chapter like two or three, all right? See some of those problems. So this is now going to be 1250 times the cosine of 55. Now, directionality is important, okay? These are vectors. So it's negative. Why? Well, because... If I erase now my triangle up here, okay, look, if I were to create the origin at this particular location, right, it's pointing this x, the x component of this vector is pointing in the negative x direction, all right, so that's why it's negative. I'm, I'm saying my uh, origin is right here, so actually let me leave my coordinate system up there, it makes it a little clearer, uh, it makes it a little clearer. So next would be the y component of this thing. So what's the y component? Well, that would be the sine, right? Considering that this forms a right triangle, here's the right triangle, okay? You get the idea. That would be sine of 55 now, okay? So it's positive because it's pointing upward. So here we have now uh, 1250 sine of 55. Okay, that takes care of the first uh, Q1, uh, Q, right? Let's call this one now Q2, okay? So now this will be FQ2. And let's talk about the X and Y components here. So again, draw your right triangle. Here's the right triangle. Okay, you get the, you get the picture, all right? Um, the X component here is, again, going to be a cosine value. 
Uh, this particular time, and it's negative, it's pointing in the negative x direction. This time it's negative 1250 multiplied by the cosine of now 75. So we already can see that these are not balanced, right? Okay. Um, then the y component now is negative, okay? So it's going to be negative now 1250 sine of 75. And as we can see, those are not balanced either, okay? Okay. Now, you might stop here, but this is the important thing now. That there is now a, there has to be, if this system is in equal zero, right? If the system is in equilibrium, these don't balance, so there's something missing here, okay? Because I know that when I add these things together, they better equal zero overall, okay? They better equal zero. This would be the net force at the bottom, okay? So, what's missing? Well, that would be the force of the kneecap. I'll call it F sub K. All right, and we don't know what it is, right? We might not know what direction. You might have an idea, but let's just assume we don't know. So what am I gonna call this? I'm gonna call this X, and what am I gonna call this? I'm gonna call this Y. So, we have now two equations, right? Whenever we think about x and y's, as you can see, the component table is very nice because it organizes our thoughts. So now I have a two-track analysis that the sum of the force in the x direction have to equal zero. <clears throat> and then the sum of the forces in the y direction also have to equal zero. So here we go. So my x, right, I'm, I'm going to, you know, these are all added together. They're going to equal zero. I'm just going to solve for x right off the bat here, okay? So x here must equal then. 1250, I'm just doing algebra, that's all. So 1250 now, this is then going to be um, time, this is now going to be the cosine of 55 plus the sine of 75. Okay, I know it trailed off into this line a little bit, so let's move that over. And then the y is gonna be very much uh, similar, okay? Uh, so the y value now is going to be our 1250. And then now we're going to take, uh, this should be sine of 75 minus than the sine of 55. Okay, I just did some algebra, re reworked everything. So here my x value now, let's calculate. So this is cosine of 55 plus the sine of 75. Okay, that's multiplied by now 1250. Oop. Okay, so here we now have <clears throat> 1924. Newtons, I mean, yeah, considering sig figs, we probably round to 1920, but just leave it like that for now. And then the y value will be, so 1250 uh, times now we have uh, sine of 75 minus sine of 55. Oh, 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 I made a mistake. I see, I see guys. Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. I'm human. All right, I made a mistake. 183. Okay, where did my mistake? Where's my mistake? Right here. Okay, that's not the sine of 75. Should be the cosine of 75. Right here, guys. I'm boxing it, okay? All right, so just change that. This should be cosine of 75. Okay, and let me just erase this answer. Let me recalculate that. So 1250 times then uh, we have now cosine of 55 plus the cosine of 75. Yeah, that, that makes a little more sense now. So this is 1040, okay, Newtons. Okay, these are the X and Y components, all right? Notice they're both positive, okay? That tells us something very useful. So now if I have to find the overall magnitude, now this is easy. This goes back to stuff we've done prior, right? The overall result in here should be now equal to the square root of the sum of all the x values squared plus the sum of all the y values squared. I already summed everything up, so we here we go, right? It's 1040 squared plus 183 squared, okay? So the resultant vector here for that force that the kneecap is ex is exerting is now going to be 1040 squared plus 183 squared. And what do we get? About 1056, right? And that's in terms of Newtons, okay? 
and we probably should have yeah i'll leave it as that it might i don't know this number should there's no decimal there so it should have three sig figs but whatever you know uh, you can round this to three you know some professors care about it some don't most don't so i don't uh that's all that really matters right uh so that takes care of uh, the magnitude, then direction, right? We have to then find the angle. And the angle is very straightforward. Just remember that uh, this particular formula, inverse tan, of then it's going to be the uh, y over x, right? So the y value is 183 over my 1040. And then theta now should be inverse tangent of that number. So inverse tan of 183 over 1040. And we get about 10 degrees, okay? 10 degrees, and it's positive. Therefore, that tells us that it is, and I'll draw it in my picture here. So the 10 degrees tells us that the resultant force, and you can see this looks nicely balanced. That's 10 degrees. And then the resultant value up here is now then going to be 1056 newtons. Now, before we conclude, be very careful about what the question is asking, okay? It says, find the direction and magnitude of the force exerted by, by the kneecap, okay? Not the force exerted on the kneecap, but by the kneecap. This force that we just found, the magnitude and direction, is the force exerted on the kneecap, okay? Is the force exerted by the femur on the kneecap. But we want to find the force exerted by the kneecap on the femur. And guess what? We've done this in the past too. All it is is the opposite, okay? It's the opposite direction and magnitude of the vector that we found, okay? Due to Newton's third law. So the force exerted on the kneecap will be equal but opposite to the force exerted by the kneecap. And therefore, the final vector and answer is this one that I'm drawing in right here. It's then 10 degrees below the horizontal, and the value is still 1056, considering four sig figs. I, I don't, you know, this answer doesn't have a decimal there, but if it did, it'd have four. If it doesn't, technically it should have three, so this should be 1060. All right, but in any case, I don't know what they're looking for. So, uh, but the final answer would be this. So in terms of writing it, it would be uh, 1056 or 1060, depending upon your sig figs, Newtons at... 10 degrees, um, we could say, you know, in terms of my coordinate system, 10 degrees, you know, south of west. Okay, that would be the final answer. Guys, thanks for checking it out. Appreciate it very much. Spread the good word. Spread the good word. You got a good resource. It's free. Um, hopefully we're helping you guys. And um, yeah, give us a hand too. All right. A symbiotic relationship. Thank you very much, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.